In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel reading this morning began with this verse. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verse 35. Who is not interested in saving their lives, in making their lives worthwhile, full and rich, worth the living? Deep down within us, every one of us has a hunger for life and a desire to live life to the fullest. This is what our Lord is talking about in this verse today. If this is what you want, he said, I'll tell you how to acquire it. And there are two attitudes that we can take toward life that are possible for us. We can have one or we can have the other. One attitude is to save your life now. Hoard it, clutch it, cling to it, grasp it. Try to get hold of it for yourself and to see that in every situation Your first and major concern is, what is in it for me? That is one way to live. And millions are living that way today. So this is one attitude. The other attitude is to lose it, fling it away. Disregard what advantage there may be for you in a situation and move toward dependence on God, regardless of what may happen to you. You know, Abraham obeyed God and he went out into a land he knew nothing about. apparently careless of what would happen to him. And his neighbors rebuked him for not caring about himself, not thinking of himself. But Christ said, this is to be a way of life. Trust God and obey him. So there are only two results that can follow. If you save your life, if you cling to it, if you hoard it, get all you can for yourself, then Jesus said, you will lose it. He is stating a fundamental law of life. You will find that all of the life you grasp has slipped through your fingers you have ended up with a handful of cobwebs and ashes, dissatisfied, hollow, and empty, mocked by what you had hoped to get. But lose your life for my sake and the gospels, said Christ. Lose your life by means of giving yourself away in the cause of Christ giving up your right to yourself, taking up your cross and following me. And if you do that, then you will save your life. You will save it. You will not waste it, but you will save save it and you will have an inner peace and a sense of worth about your living you will discover not just in heaven someday, but right now. It will be like you're living in heaven, but you are on earth. 
that even though you may not have all the things others have, your life will be rich. It will be rewarding and it will be satisfying. This is God's plan in the work of discipleship. We are all called to be disciples, right? Jesus did not come to call us to ultimate barrenness, weakness, darkness, and death. He called us to life, to richness, to enjoyment, to fulfillment. But he has told us that the way there means death. We will all die bodily, but something inside of you lives, and that's your soul. So take care of your soul. Discipleship, discipleship ends in life, not in death. It ends in fulfillment and satisfaction. But the only way that we can find it is by means of the cross. What did Christ do? He died on the cross, but he was resurrected. Let me conclude with a meditation I read recently from a theologian back in the 17th century. He was speaking about this peace, this inner peace that we are looking for. We can find peace in the midst of affliction, he wrote. The stubborn clinging to worldly life and worldly values makes the cross necessary. The same clinging also tends to make us reject the cross. So we have to go over the same ground again and again. The cross frees us from the bondage of selfish love. Me, me, me. By the experience of the cross, we emerge from that prison of self and enter into the immense liberty of God. If we must suffer, then let us do it quietly and humbly. Faith is willing to let God act with the most perfect freedom, knowing that we belong to Him and are to be concerned only about being faithful in that which He has given us to do for the moment. And he continues on, be faithful to the present moment, doing one thing at a time, and you will receive all the grace you need. Surrender consists not in doing great heroic deeds about which self can brag, but simply in accepting whatever God sends. And I'll end with these words. Full surrender is full peace. Amen.